Waymo, the self-driving car company owned by Google's parent company, is getting ready to roll out a fleet of self-driving taxis. Those cabs will not be entirely without human drivers, even if the driver is miles away. Chris Van Cleve is riding through Washington with the Silicon Valley startup's plan to come to the rescue when self-driving cars don't know what to do. Chris, good morning. Well, good morning. You know, Nora, before too long, we won't need anyone here behind the steering wheel to drive this vehicle. But we've already seen examples where the self-driving cars run into situations where they can get confused and have to stop, like going through a construction zone. The one we're going through right now is an example of that. Uh, this silicon-based company is hoping that when the car needs to phone a friend, it'll be their technology that puts a remote driver there to answer the call. Welcome, everybody. My name is Ben, and I will be your phantom remote operator for this drive. I'll be monitoring your vehicle remotely. Ben Shookman, our remote driver, is a few miles away in a Silicon Valley office. For that, we'll be doing this. California is one of at least five states allowing self-driving cars to be on the road without a safety driver if they have a system in place for a human to take over remotely. The steering wheel is moving car is moving. If you're wondering why an autonomous vehicle might need somebody like a Ben, as the self-driving technology advances, we know that General Motors, for example, is going to build one without a steering wheel, without gas pedals or brakes. So if there was a situation where the self-driving car had to stop and didn't know what to do, you as the occupant couldn't do anything to help. You would need somebody to intervene remotely. Phantom Auto doesn't build self-driving cars, but they're hoping their technology can come to the rescue of a confused autonomous vehicle. It uses cell phone signals and cameras already mounted to the vehicle, so a remote driver can take over in a situation where the car doesn't know what to do. You're saying the ultimate backup for the self-driving car is the human. Yeah. Say you come to a construction site and you have a construction worker giving hand signals. Somebody vehicle. flagging traffic. And exactly, exactly. And so the vehicle may approach that construction site and just completely be paralyzed. At that point, the vehicle itself would ping a Phantom Auto remote operator. The remote operator would be able to drive you through the construction site in the same way you could drive through a construction site today. Waymo, the self-driving company owned by Google's parent Alphabet, is developing its own assist technology. Nissan is working on a system where the autonomous vehicle would stop and wait for a remote user to draw at a map around an obstacle. Phantom's technology allows the passenger and remote driver to see and talk to each other. What a lot of people seeing this are going to wonder is, what is it like driving a car that you're nowhere near? They go through a very strict training procedure in order to learn how to operate something completely new. How do you keep the car from getting hacked? We have a system in place where we, our architecture can fit into the vehicle in a way where we can override a malicious hacker. Federal regulations are stalled in Congress, leaving oversight largely to the states. Some are stricter than others. The self-driving Uber crash that killed a pedestrian in Arizona has prompted states to take a second look at their regulations, as the technology is not yet foolproof. We can bridge the technological gap from 99% to 100% by keeping a human in the loop. Even after the Uber crash, you think the technology is 98, 99% there? The last one or two percent is a really, really difficult piece of the puzzle to solve. Um, so it could be years until the technology is at 100%. You can kind of think of the Phantom Auto service similar to OnStar, a remote help desk that would automatically communicate with the car or with passengers by a touch of a button. You'd have one remote driver acting as the backup driver for several vehicles, and that would leave the backup plan for a self-driving car firmly in the hands of a human. Gail? Okay, I like anything with humans. I like OnStar. <laughs> Listen, try not to sound like Nana at the table because I know it's coming. I just got to get, just got to get there. I got to get there. Well, I just want the people else, that though. are working on it to really be good at what they're doing. And so far, you see people like that. No. But you're like everyone else. You're used really? to having yes. a wheel, or at least next to somebody who has a wheel. It gives you a sense of yes. control. That's no small thing. And I'm used to an accelerator and a brake, too. Yeah. I like yeah. that, too. Wow. These are primal instincts. Well, ready. and there are so many construction sites yes. and stuff that is not in the GPS. You got to get used to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris Van Cleve.